Welcome to Art with Lorian, the place to reconnect with your inner artist and discover the joy of painting outside the lines. On today's episode, we are going to be exploring color more in depth, playing with the paints, mixing colors, and continuing our discovery of the theme of monochromatic color schemes using the 12 colors of the rainbow, our primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. And this time we'll be creating tones, mid-tones. We'll be using black and white and combining these colors to create various tones of our 12 colors. And so just a recap of my previous episodes, we have been making shades using black, using the 12 colors, adding black, and creating four different shades of each color. And this is just one way to make a shade. I'm gonna show you next episode how to create shades without using black, um, which can sometimes dull the color a little bit. And then we also created tints. Tints are colors that have white added to it where the color gets lighter, the, the hue becomes more pastel and more subtle and lighter and we created four different gradations of tints using white. And so on this episode we'll be using our 12 colors and creating a simple color wheel in the center of the paper like we've done before. And then going outwards using the white and the black to mix four different versions of gray that move from light to dark mixed with that particular color. So we'll have overall 48 tones of each of all of these colors and, and four of each and it'll just be a really interesting way of also looking at how you can use these colors and you'll have by the end of these three exercises you'll have about 150 different versions, tints, tones, and shades of all these colors. So that's a lot to work with. And then in my coming episodes, we will be exploring and playing and creating all sorts of paintings using all of these skills and building on these skills that we've been developing. And so let's get started. Um, I'd like to introduce the materials we'll be using today. Uh, like before, I like to use gouache paints. So whatever paints you're using, great continue on or carry on with those. I like to use the gouache. A couple of reasons is I like their consistency. They're, they're very clay-like and they're very rich and they have a lot of body and they're fun. They're fun to play with. I really like them. And then the paper I'm using is a Bristol board. It's a hundred pound weight, heavy weight, vellum, smooth finish uh, Bristol board paper. So it's smooth. And it, it's really, for me, it works really well in these kinds of projects and exercises. It's a simple paper, it's nothing fancy, but it does a great job. And I use a 14 by 17 size. And these are all these things I'm showing you are on my supplies list on my website. You'll require a pencil of choice, your water container, brushes, spray bottle, and your palette. Okay, so let's get started with the actual mixing. Now what I've done today, as I have in the past, is I mixed the colors in advance just a few minutes ago so I can have things ready and we can just roll. And so you'll mix your 12 colors and go ahead and just step by step, um, you're going to create a small color wheel in the center of your paper and what I do is I find the center and you know up and down and laterally and I just make a little point and then from there I make the markers and I label where I'm going to put those colors. You can also refer to your previous color wheels to guide you. Um, but yeah, I created a, just a, a, a circular, it ended up being an oval shape <laughs> color wheel and it has my 12 colors. And what I did next, like we've done before, this is something we've done before. Um, this isn't a new design concept, but it's simple and it'll be good for our tones today, is I took my pencil and I just created little markings or marks on the 
that come out from each color on the paper that come out and like radiate like the sun. So you can go ahead and do that. You don't have to, but I find it helps me with spacing and to make sure I get all my paints on the paper. I get all my swatches and there's no issue of running out of space or anything like that. Okay, so let's start with our tones. I've gone ahead and just right now put a little bit of white and a little bit of black on my palette. And I'm going to mix, I'm also going to mix my four um, gradations right now. So what you'll do is you will take your brush and, or palette knife, I think I'll start with the palette knife, and create a, a light gray, enough to last, well, it might last through all 12 colors. You may have to add a little bit more. Create a little bit more. Okay. And I'm gonna pop in my, this to be a light gray. That's actually too dark. So black, again, it's the power color and it is a little dark. But um, that's the gray I have, and it's it's kind of nice. It's just I would say it's it's most likely number two or number three gray. So I'm gonna add a little bit more white to this and tone it down a little, get it a little lighter. And this is what you'll do. The same thing. You'll be kind of you know we're mixing paint, so it's it's it's. It's organic and it's free and there's a lot of room for experimentation, trial and error. Okay, so that's a pretty nice gray. And this gray will be added to each of the four, uh, I'm sorry, the 12 colors. Okay. It's going to re redo this. Okay. So I'm going to start with my primary colors. I'm going to start with red. I'm going to add a little bit of this gray to the red. And this will take a while. And that's ooh, 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 very cool. And I'm going to just put it down. Right here. And what you'll find is that you'll either go ahead and do all the reds together, or all that single color that you're focused on in that moment, or you may go ahead and do each one light that first gradation of gray for each of the 12 colors. I'm gonna do them all like a single color and just get darker and darker and darker. Similar to what I did with my tints and shades. For me, that's that's the best way for me to do it. And there's no right way, there's no right order. I mean, eventually you'll have all 12 colors with the four gradations of tones, the four tones of each color that get darker. So I'm just gonna carry on and add a little bit more black to this so it's a little bit darker and see what happens and it will be getting darker and it becomes a very interesting uh, shade of red well it's a tone So this is, this is taking what we did with tints and, and shades and just kind of upping the ante. It is uh, definitely more labor intensive, I would say. And it is, there's a lot of room for, not for error, maybe error, but definitely you know, you will find that 
you're gonna you'll be you'll be massaging and you'll be experimenting you'll be fine-tuning these old I think a little bit more than with just the plain white and the plain black um, like I'm doing right now <laughs> um, and again black is a very strong strong color and so a little goes a long way and just putting in my last tone here and incidentally yep I've got to work on this a little bit more okay. mine are getting bigger as well and it doesn't really matter what these swatches look like as long as you they all fit on the paper <laughs> and if you want to do something specific like small to big or big to small or all the same size go for it I'm just definitely preforming here and yeah so I'm gonna stop there and hold it up for you to see what I've got I've got four tones of red and they are, they, these are really useful when we start to paint because these will become, well it depends what you're doing, what kind of painting you're doing, if it's landscapes or abstracts or portraits or still lives. Uh, tones have a, a large role to play like tints and shades in, in varying and creating depth and dimension in your artwork. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish with my primary colors. I'm gonna move on to blue. That's the order I'm going to do. Whatever order you do is your prerogative, your choice. And I'm going to start with this, this blue and this very light gray. I'm actually going to clean this too. These palette knives can get... We've got to keep them clean. All right. And my spray bottle. Because this takes time, gotta keep everybody alive here. Okay, and so as you can see, I've completed my primary color tones red, yellow, and blue, and four tones of each of those, going from light gray to darker, and then finally darkest gray of each of the three primaries. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and continue with my secondaries, creating four tones of each of orange, green, and purple. I'm gonna go ahead with purple first. I'm gonna start with purple today. I love purple. And so I'm going to take my purple here, add it to the light gray that is missing in action. I've gotta make up a little batch. And begin with my secondary colors. So I've completed my primary and secondary colors, my orange, green, purple, red, yellow, and blue. And continuing, I'm going to take on my 
tertiary colors, which again are the combinations of the primes and the secondaries. And I'm going to start with uh, orange red and adding those four tones, those tones that go from light gray to dark gray on the paper for all six of the remaining colors of my color wheel, my tertiary colors. So, let's start. So now I've completed tones for the entire color wheel, my primaries, secondaries, and tertiary colors. Here they are in their totality, their tonality. <laughs> And so there are four tones that get darker for each of the 12 colors of the spectrum. And I wanted to share another artist that I really appreciate who does paint in the monochromatic color schemes using tones, using shades, using tints, and her name is Georgia O'Keeffe. And I really, really love her work. She's one of my favorite artists. And you'll, if you look at her work and you study it, you'll see how she uses like a blue and it just expands into the blues with the tones and the tints and the shades with her, her imagery and it's just beautiful and there's so much you can do with monochromatic colors. And so I look forward to next episode where we will also be continuing with color a little bit more of color theory, color practice, color mixing, and exploring the color schemes a little bit more and starting to delve more into the meaning of colors, what colors mean and how they impact us and how our emotions are connected to the colors of the color spectrum. And so I hope you enjoyed playing with the tints, tones, and the shades of the monochromatic color scheme. And I'll see you in the studio. Here is our special, extra special helper. Her name is Moo, and she will be 10 weeks old, and she is getting heavier. And look how big she is now. Look at this little girl. So she helped us a lot in this production, and we look forward to further episodes where pretty soon she will be too big to lift. <laughs> See you in the studio.